talking with Bob McTeer, who uh, was part of the Alan Greenspan's team for many years uh, during September 11 and the rest, uh, when the interest rates went down so sharply and stayed so low and then started to rise rapidly. Um, talking to him, he has been under severe criticism in, from some quarters in the United States for apparently uh, supporting a so-called weak dollar. But the fact of the matter is that if the United States is worried about exports and, uh, and, and, being, and being priced out of the market by the Chinese and outsourcing of jobs and all the rest. <laughs> As we all know, there is only one real route apart from protectionism, which is to make those goods less expensive for export and to make imports more expensive, which incidentally also helps with the massive uh, gap in the balance of, of uh, imports and exports in the United States. And the way to do that is to allow the exchange rate to change, to allow that the dollar to fall, not dramatically, not precipitously, but gradually. And in fact, that is exactly what has happened. And as a direct result of that, it's been much easier for uh, American companies to export, and it's put a little bit of a dampener on imports. So it's interesting that there has been this amount of emotional angst over his comments, a hate mail of the rest, uh, which uh, perhaps is surprising for people who come from the other side of the pond, from places like the UK, where these kinds of issues are much more uh, debated and perhaps more widely understood, I don't know, amongst the, the working population. You know, the understanding that basically, if your pound is too high, you just can't sell anything. If the pound is very low, of course, it's inflationary in terms of the goods and services we buy in from outside, but it's not necessarily inflationary regarding the goods and services we supply to ourselves inside the country. So watch this space. There's going to be a lot more emotional angst about the level of the dollar which may well have quite a long way still to fall. The big issue with the dollar is what is going to happen to the trillions of dollars of sovereign wealth funds that have been accumulated by countries like China, Singapore, Russia and uh, Abu Dhabi and the rest. The decisions that these governments make about the nature of their dollar investments will have a huge impact on the future uh, direction of the dollar's value. The fact is that if the Chinese government was to liquidate their more than one, one trillion dollars of dollar assets rapidly, in turn it would cause a dive in the value of their remaining dollar assets. And for that reason it's not very likely that these sovereign funds would make a massive switch. What is more likely is that we will continue to see what we have done in the past, which is the conversion of these dollar assets from uh, long-term government US bonds into uh, some more sensible investments in terms of better return into things like property, especially now that property is becoming a, a quite good value in some parts of the United States, or into distressed banks which require some liquidity to keep going to rebuild their balance sheets and other things, um, or uh, into other sectors uh, like IT uh, and, and other parts of manufacturing and so on. So it's going to be fascinating to see what these sovereign wealth funds do. And in turn, those decisions will also cause some emotional disquiet in some parts of America.